Hello, I'm Dr. John Rochino, Director of Orchestral Studies at Cal State Northridge, where I'm also the Music Director of Opera Productions. We're very excited this fall to be performing in this beautiful Valley Performing Arts Center, George Bizet's masterpiece, Carmen. As you can imagine, producing an opera is no easy accomplishment. Here is a sneak peek of what goes on behind the scenes as we prepare for this new production of a timeless classic. Bizet and his wife had both been uh, fighting with the militia to protect Paris during the, the siege of Paris during the Franco-Prussian War. He was really anxious to work on a new project. He came back to Paris and uh, started working on, on Carmen. And his wife had left him, or left him during the work on that. It was first produced in 1875. The first season that it ran, it was a flop. And Bizet thought that, that his beloved piece of work was uh, a failure. Uh, he died in the interim year, and then the following season, it was a huge hit because it was a, a beginning of a new phase of, of taste in, in theater, in opera at any rate, where the characters were much more realistic, the, uh, uh, the drama was much more passionate and down to earth. The characters were, were of, of real people rather than larger than life. And uh, the, the audiences at the time just didn't know what to do with it uh, until the following year when um, it became a huge hit. But sadly, of course, Bizet had never seen that. Bizet has always been fascinating to me. I played him in a movie over 20 years ago now. And I remember when I first researched him, just being fascinated by this man who had had a middling career for quite a long time. And then whenever there is an emotional upheaval in his life, he would come out with these remarkable pieces of, of music that just hit straight to the heart. As of the situation that he was going through with his wife, I think, at the time, he opened up his heart a great deal. And you can hear that in the music. The more I listen to it, the more I hear the, the struggle that he's putting into the characters. I can hear the emotional strains and the undercurrents of the music now. And it's not just in the large, you know, party pieces, not just in the habanero. Or the Toreador song. Which are all remarkable pieces of music, but it's in a lot of the interstitial music and all the, a lot of the music that that rides underneath those pieces that I find a beating heart of a man who is desperate to expose the human condition, to try to understand himself a little better.